Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening, YouTubers. Okay. This is just going to be hopefully not too terribly dry and boring and wear, wear you out listening, but it's important, I think. Uh, I had asked Gabriel about, you know, getting in shape advice. He's the one that mentioned the uh, P90X exercise stuff. Um, clothing, I need a pair of pants, I need something that fits, that wears, you know, it's adjustable. Military pants make sense, not something I tend to want to wear a lot because you have the uh, gray man concept. Be the gray man, be invisible, don't wear anything that stands out. Well, in some places, camouflage is going to make you stand out. Um... You know, where if everybody's walking around in sweatpants and basketball, have sweatpants and a basketball and basketball shoes. So, in fact, one guy says, he said, man, he says, you know, if we were really good patriots, you know, we'd want to do an assassination or something. You know, you'd be walking down the street, bouncing your basketball, pull out a gun, bam, kill the target and, the, you know, crooked politician or whatever, and just keep on bouncing your basketball down there, down the street. <laughs> Anyway, what is the gray man? Not the subject of this topic, so moving right along. And the topic is military pants and BDUs. Okay, BDUs are good, cheap, and durable. However, there's something to consider. There is, in fact, there, in fact, is better, and if you search, you can find better for a little more. Now, BDUs meaning battle dress utilities, okay? But first, stay the hell away from the atomic rubble gray gravel driveway camouflage ACU pants. They are utter garbage. For one, obviously the camouflage is nearly ineffective unless in an urban concrete or office cubicle environment. And I've heard it got a lot of our guys killed. Um, so for urban operations, they aren't too bad to have. And for folks that can't stand the heat and want something that is a little lighter than the BDUs, they are a way to go. However, with the gray camo ACUs, there is a defect, which is they tear almost like paper. This was intentional, so if a soldier receives a gunshot wound or injury, they can readily be torn open to access and address the wound immediately. Of course, the fact that he got shot because he was wearing them. All right, so. The problem is that it, this is rather stupid in that any fatigue or battle dress cloth ever issued, as long as there is a puncture hole or tear present, you can readily tear all of them open if the need should arise. The other thing is that we often carry a knife, EMT shears, seat belt cutter, or all, or a combination of them. So this was really unnecessary to lighten the gauge of the fabric in ACUs at all, and all it did was make a uniform that tears like paper on any little snag. Albeit in extremely hot climates, they are the best venting and lightest, coolest thing you can wear. With that said, the government issue multicam or scorpion OCP camo uniform top and trousers are just as cool, venting, and lightweight as the gray ACUs. But the fabric, although still lighter than BDUs, has been made with a stronger nylon and cotton twill that matches the strength of ripstop BDUs. The multicam or scorpion camo, unlike the gray shit, is truly very is very truly universal and is on an absolute match, perfect match for most all terrains and seasons in the Midwest and South, and is superior to BDU's woodland camo in that the black has been omitted. Thusly, it blends into terrain better, and there is no black to stick out, and it further fools the eyes of the onlooker. With the government issue multi-camera scorpion OCP camo top and trousers, they are as comfortable as pajamas. You can get flame retardant ones on eBay if you look, and they are treated with permethrian so not only do they not go up like chernobyl if flame or burning debris lands on them they also have non-scented insect repellent permeated into them to keep keep fleas ticks lice mosquito and most any other unwelcome insects away from you they're also unable to be seen under the infrared night vision much like bdus Problem is with used BDUs, if they have ever been starched, they will glow like a Christmas tree under night vision. And the ACUs, due to the light color, tend to reflect IRR infrared and show up or stick out more readily than unstarched BDUs. 
However, the Universal Camo Multicam or Scorpion OCP trousers and shirt top have an extremely low infrared signature and are never starched. We stop starching our uniforms with the BDUs. The ACUs and OCP uniforms are wash and wear only, never starch. So used good condition multicams will never have starch embedded into the cloth to be readily seen under night vision. The other thing to factor is that with the multicams, the reinforcement patches or areas of the knees, those have a Velcro opening on the seams for hiding things like documents or currency. However, the real intention of these openings is that they are meant to have a piece of foam inserted into them so that you have built-in knee pads that are light, will always be where they are supposed to be and will not chaff or cut off circulation. Conventional knee pads end up around your ankles when you have to run. And if you make them tight enough to not do that when all you're doing is cutting off circulation, as well as bruising and cutting up the back sides of your knees, to not do that, then all you're doing is cutting off circulation as well as bruising and cutting up the back sides of your knees. With the current uniform, you either buy the expensive pieces of foam meant to be the inexpensive pieces of foam meant to be knee padding, or you just find some foam and cut it to size and slip it in there. These pants also have a more comfortable drawstring for the waist rather than the metallic buckle cinch straps on the sides of the BDUs. Because of this, if wearing load bearing or harness gear like pistol belts or the waist strap and kidney pack of a rucksack, you don't have any metal buckles to dig into you or be flipped out and loosened. With the drawstring in the new uniform, you can compensate for weight gain or loss, and your trousers will fit just fine and stay up. Even if you had to remove your belt and use it for something like a tourniquet or strap something down, all of which are things to consider. Below is a perfect example of what you want to look for, and if you want an, an article of military utility or combat uniform, that will cover as many bases for you as possible. All right, so, and this is an example. Um, this is the uh, Scorpion Multicam OCP. Scorpion OCP, this is a female, whatever, you know, small, size 28. Um, flame resistant Multicam trouser, this is the Multicam. And now this is a jacket multi-cam scorpion jacket. The uh, interesting thing is, um, now this is a uh, ECWCS, and that's, um, of course, current production scorpion pattern, USDI, you know, USDI issue, ECWS, extreme cold weather system, cold weather, extreme cold weather combat system, cover system. Not quite sure on that. Let's last second see there. Um, Gen 3, uh, layer 6, cold weather wet jacket replacing existing multicam pattern. So, point being is that this is, it says 100% nylon Gore-Tex, okay? So, this thing is going to be, you know, probably a little bit pricey, but, you know, 65 bucks maybe. But, just something to think about with uh, possible hard weather, worse weather coming up. I would highly recommend that you look at getting good clothing. I have advised everyone to get uh, snow socks for their automobiles, like right now, <clears throat> while they're still available. While they are still very inexpensive, 35 bucks, get some. Get two pair. Get a pair for other vehicles. It's a cheap investment in not having a, you know, losing a, a vehicle. You know, I... Uh, have full coverage on my van because you know I'd never done that before and the insurance agent I called him and he was like well chances are in the next 20 years something's going to happen to that van I'm like well yeah 20 years I mean nobody drives a vehicle for 20 years especially when it's already 15 years old 10 years old minimum 12 2006 okay I said why do you pick 20 years he says well the difference in coverage is 200 bucks between liability and full coverage, $200 a year. So for that $200, you trash that thing in the next year, and it's worth, let's say, $4,000, which is probably ballpark pretty accurate. That's 20 years. 4000 divided by 200 That's 20 years of coverage that you're going to receive 
for having spent the 200 bucks. So, duh. Something to think about. If you're not driving with uh, full coverage, you might think about getting it. For $20, like I said, this guy, I just call him Dumbass Dave, you know, for a difference of 20 bucks, he flushed six or $7,000 down the toilet of Bill's money. So, not good, not smart, not intelligent. And I'm thinking, okay, I didn't pay, I'm not paying that much for the van, but it's not paid for yet. And if something does happen to it, I should be able to just like, okay, sorry, here's the money. I got the insurance coverage. So, uh, so I did. So anyway, uh, bunny trail, bunny trail. But I digress, as Richie from Boston would say, or John Morgyle. All right, so OCP, multicam, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I got um, extra large short. I think this is the pair. Um, one of them said make offer, so I did. Yeah, th this twenty seven ninety five. I offered 19 and they came back with 22 so okay so I got those um, so I got a pair of those coming and at least it'll be something for me to wear that'll be durable and if well when the shit hits the fan um, I'll have them and I'll be able to get them now highest bidder I, I was outbid on these so I'm not gonna mess with getting a second pair because I don't have the money anyway the other one I are on credit so I don't need to rack up my credit bill anymore than it already is um, point I'm making here one is that you know I have this one for a reason I had uh, my you know the hat that I was wearing when I did lights out the boonie hat um, I got quite a few different boonie hats at one point and one of the reasons was because you know things are going to get to the point I believe where I'm going to be going mobile and helping people and, and I'll have a hopefully have a team with me and a couple or three of those team Members might just be the type that might want to watch my back. So, um, just a word to the wise and just, just you know, suggestion. But, but here's my point is that it would not be a bad idea for everybody coming here to get some good pants. Now, gear, you know, I said jacket, Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is going to be worth its weight in gold. If you don't have Gore-Tex, you should. Um... Uh, failing that, Tyvek, some kind of Tyvek jacket. Now, they don't make Tyvek as a rule of thumb other than based for advertising because it's so light. But I'm here to tell you, I worked in 30 below and lower temperature on a regular basis in Denver. And when it hit 30 below and the wind picked up, I would pull, because I had a military wool sweater on, U.S. issue GI sweater, that was the biggest thing that I, I used. I had I had layered clothing, you know, dual fold wool underwear, um, long johns. I had the sweater and wool pants, and I I had flight pants actually. Most of what I put wore on the dock was military Air Force flight pants. But point is, is that I'm and I hunted in cold weather too. But when it got really cold, and the, wind picked up so it was you know wind chill of 40 below 50 below i pulled out of my pocket a little tyvek joe camel jacket that was about that big wadded up not folded up nicely you get them in a package they're about about the size of a pack of cigarettes <clears throat> camel wide cigarettes you know about that long four inches long three inches wide and about three quarters maybe half inch deep once you get that out and ball it up and start wrinkling it up, it's very quiet. It's very soft and very quiet. Tyvek, at first, like building Tyvek, you can make that stuff totally silent by wrinkling it, wadding it, rolling it, putting it through a dryer, putting it through a washer, you know, pull it through a ringer washer. That'll quiet it down real quick, like deer hide. <clears throat> anyway, soften deer hide, soften Tyvek. No difference. All right. So, you... Um, I'd put that on, and that, that would be the difference for another 10, 20 degrees of, of safety, that Tyvek. So Tyvek is good stuff. Gore-Tex is far better, especially when it's along with some insulation. But, all right, so it, my point is that get, um, that's a sun dog. I just throw it out there for maybe the thing will pick it up. <laughs> and a sun dog is a reflection of, well, it's, you know, where does it, what is it a reflection off of? Who knows? 
but you see the sun, you see below it another sun, another light point to the left and to the right, and up above it, and then a secondary one out to the sides, and out to then three quarters up and above, and another one below if you could see over the horizon. And golly gee whiz, when you put a lighter or a, uh, what do you call it, a, a flashlight, LED, a candle, whatever, inside of a glass bowl, guess what? You get the exact same thing. So, get that one out of there so we don't have to see it anymore. All right. <clears throat> 15 minutes. I'm going to call it quits there. Baba da baba da bing bang. Goodbye.